There's an old Geico commercial that was one of their original commercials, I think, back in about 2004, 2005. And there's this husband and he's watching TV and he's just very in, intense on, on, the, on the television. And his very attractive wife walks into the room and she says, Honey, does this dress make me look fat? And really, without blinking, without even hesitating, without even looking up, he says, yeah, you betcha. Oh, wrong answer, wrong answer. This guy is in trouble, big trouble, because he heard the words, but he didn't listen. He heard his wife, he recognized his wife's voice, but he didn't listen to what she was saying. It's one thing to hear, and it's something completely different to listen. Have you ever been with a parent or a child or a spouse or a boss and had that happen? Sometimes I do that with God. I do that with Jesus, our shepherd, too. And I imagine I'm not the only one. Have you ever had that experience? Sometimes we're just content to be in the presence of the shepherd. And, and there is something beautiful about that, and sometimes that's okay. But sometimes we can get so absorbed in what we're doing, what we're thinking, that we don't really listen. Well, that's what the story that Pastor Steve shared with us from the Gospel of John this morning is all about today. It's actually about listening to the voice of the shepherd. Listening to the voice of the shepherd helps, it to, helps us to make choices that are life-giving. Choices that remind us of who we are and what's really important in our life. Actually, the voice of the shepherd protects us. I recently read a story about Mark Cuban, who is the owner of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks. In 2001... He offered WGN Chicago radio host David Kaplan, now uh, I think he's gone on to ESPN, he offered him $50,000 to legally change his name to Dallas Maverick. A guy in the Chicago Bulls radio area is offered $50,000 to change his name to Dallas Maverick. And when Kaplan poli politely declined, Cuban sweetened the offer. And he told, he told Kaplan that he'd pay him $100,000, plus he would donate $100,000 to his favorite charity. And all he had to do was just take the name for one year. After some soul searching and, and being bombarded by emails and, and phone calls from listeners who said he was crazy to turn down the money, Kaplan held firm and told Cuban no. Kaplan explained, I'd be saying I'd do anything for money, and that bothers me. My name is my birthright. I'd like to preserve both my integrity and my credibility. When a person is baptized, when, when, a, when a person is baptized here at Messiah, no matter their age, we always introduce them after the baptism as the newest member of the family of God here at Messiah. Grayson, Ava, Lindsay, Jake, Hugh, child of God. At that moment, we grab onto our birthright. We claim the name Christian. And from that moment of our birth into God's family, the good shepherd promises to lead us to green pastures and beside still waters. He promises to restore our souls and leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. And it is that voice of the shepherd, it is the promise of the shepherd to protect us. Today is the first in a seven-part series based on the I Am statements of Jesus from the Gospel of John. Jesus clearly, in his I am statements, tells us who he is. And each of these statements reveals something about his character and testifies to the divinity of Jesus. It's such good news. Because we know that who he is helps us more clearly understand who we are as well as whose we are. 
These statements also reveal who we are as a child of God. Because we are God's sons and daughters, you see, we get a choice every single day. Every day, no matter what our circumstances are, we get to choose to hope. We get to choose life. And when we do that, there is a connection to the joy that comes from God. Now today, Jesus in the gospel reading says, I am the gate. But before we jump into that saying of Jesus, I want to set the stage for you. Because Jesus doesn't just randomly walk out to a group of people and say, I'm the gate. There's a context to which he's talking about. In the chapter right before this, in chapter 9 of, of John, Jesus has upset the religious leaders. He has healed a man who is blind by, from birth. And he doesn't only heal this guy. He heals him on the Sabbath. He broke the law. Because the religious leaders claimed that healing was actually considered work and no work should be done on the Sabbath. Imagine, if you will, just for a moment, what it was like for this formerly blind man, a man blind from birth, getting used to seeing for the very first time. There's so much to see. He spent his whole life, depending on all of his other senses, smell and touch and hearing, just to know what was within his reach. And now, now he could see far down the road and he could see right close up. He could see all the way into the heavens. And I imagine it was almost too much for him. As he heard a familiar sound, his head probably flipped around to see what it was. Oh, that loud music that came from that little tiny thing, a bird putting together what things look like with their familiar sounds, putting together textures. It had to be both exhausting and exhilarating all at the same time. And the whole world seemed new. And maybe he wanted to just laugh out loud with sheer joy, but perhaps he thought better of it because the Pharisees were so angry about his healing. I imagine all he could do was grin as he looked around, feasting on everything he could see. Imagine, imagine what it would be like to see for the very first time. And even his parents have been in drawn into the scandal, being asked of this, is this your son who was born blind, who was born without sight? And the religious leaders didn't know what to do with this guy, and they also didn't know what to do with Jesus. The formerly blind man is thrown out of the synagogue, and I imagine it was both confusing and embarrassing and so I'm sure that he took some delight and was so glad to realize that the one who had healed him had come looking for him after all the ugliness that had happened in the synagogue. And he wanted to say, thank you for my sight. And, and actually what he tells Jesus is, Lord, I believe. And now he realized in a brand new way that seeing was believing, but even more, that believing was seeing. And as he followed Jesus, he could hear the Pharisees arguing again. You don't think we're blind to the truth, do you? They asked Jesus. And Jesus answered them with sort of a riddle. If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. And they looked confused, but Jesus kept feeding them riddles. And the man now who could see I imagine must have just been smiling as he listened. He knew what the Pharisees didn't know. He knew that this was the Lord, that this was the chosen one, the Messiah. And this is where we come back to the story and the story of Jesus telling about the sheep and telling about the shepherd and telling about the gate. He's drawing on one of the most common images in all of Scripture. Sheep following their shepherds. Sheep are mentioned more than 200 times in the Bible. They are mentioned more than any other animal. Sheep, they were important as sources of wool and milk and meat. And throughout the Bible, sheep serve as a symbol of God's people. God is portrayed as the shepherd of the chosen flock in the prophetic words of Isaiah and Ezekiel. And most famously in the 23rd Psalm, which I already quoted from a little bit this morning. 
Why, why sheep? Well, they do share some cur- certain characteristics with us, especially we who claim to be set apart, we who claim to belong to the Good Shepherd. Well, first of all, sheep are followers. They will follow another sheep even to the slaughter. They will follow another sheep over a cliff. Lambs are conditioned to follow older sheep. If following isn't something that sheep really even have to think about, it's just an instinct. And a a sheep can actually come to recognize its own name and come when it's called. Sheep remember faces. Sheep remember who treats them well, and even more, they remember who handles them harshly. Sheep will allow a gentle shepherd to come close, but they will balk and run from a person who has handled them roughly in the past. Sheep find safety in numbers. Since predators attack the outliers, sheep stick together closely. When grazing, sheep, you will notice, often are huddled in in groups of four and five, always keeping other sheep in their view. Their instinct to flock is very, very strong. And sheep rarely just walk in a straight line. By tracking first to one side and then to the other, they can always be checking on what's behind them. And they, it's said, can spot danger up to 1,500 yards away. But they have trouble finding a half-open gate to go through without help. It's not a very flattering picture of an animal. And when you think about we're being compared to sheep, maybe it doesn't seem too flattering to you. But there it is. We tend to follow each other more instinctively than we just follow our good shepherd. Even when we've been trained to recognize our own name and God's distinctive call to us. We tend to remember our old hurts and our grudges. And we run away from potential encounters with those who have hurt us in the past. And we do, for the most part, tend to stick together with the same four or five people that we know best. Keeping them in our sights. Huddling together especially when we sense danger coming our way. We spend a lot of time looking behind us, making it hard sometimes to walk in a straight line. And we can spot a distant threat more easily than we can sometimes spot the open gate, the open door that's right in front of us. And yet God, God claims us as his own. God knows each of us by name and calls us into abundant life, leading us not only into the sheepfold, but into safe pastures, leading us to sweet water. If we look closely at what Jesus is saying, we see that the riddles aren't really about sheep. Jesus is talking about recognizing the shepherd. Remember that Jesus just gave sight to a man who had never seen, and yet the man recognized him as God's Messiah. While the Pharisees, who should have recognized the one that they'd been waiting for, were blind to God's power working among them. And then Jesus says that he's the gate. He's the way to safety. He's the way to green pasture. He's the way to abundant life. The shepherd loves the sheep. His greatest desire is to keep them safe from anyone or anything that would try to hurt them in any way. The Pharisees who deny Jesus, they're no better than the thieves trying to climb over the wall of the sheepfold instead of entering through the gate. But Jesus isn't only talking to the Pharisees here. Jesus is talking to me, and he's talking to you. Sometimes I have just as difficult a time as they did when it comes to hearing what Jesus is saying clearly. Sometimes I have a difficult time listening to where Jesus is leading me. But he keeps calling me. He keeps calling me by name. 
And that voice of the shepherd tells me and tells you who we are. Philip Keller, in his book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, tells us that sheep are very fearful creatures. They simply won't lie down unless they sense the shepherd is very near. They need to know that he's present. We're like that. Jesus was right when he said that sometimes we're like sheep without a shepherd and we're fearful when we don't feel we belong. There was a young girl who lived in an apartment in a big city. And after supper time in, in, the, in the summer, the children on the block, they would go back out onto the street and they would play. But after a while, one child would say that they had to go home because the mother said they had to be in before 8 o'clock. Or a father would whistle and a boy would have to leave. Or a mother would call and others would have to go. And then there was this one little girl. And she said they would all go. And it would get dark. And I would be there all alone. Waiting for my mother or my father to call me. They never did. How sad. How sad that there are children, that there are people in this world that don't know the voice of a loving parent who never get called in, who never get called home. They can do whatever they want as long as they don't get into trouble or inconvenience the parent when all that they really want and all that they really need is someone to care for them, someone to call their name with love, not someone calling their name out of anger, but someone who reaches out to them and lets them know that they matter, that they're important, that they're loved. Sometimes children grow into adults who even after hearing all the promises of God and how much God loves us, after hearing God call us by name, after hearing about God giving his life for us, they still want to live outside the flock. They question the voice of the shepherd. They question its sincerity. They question the other sheep in the flock. They question whether the other sheep will accept them or not. So I just want you to know, if you're wondering today, will I be accepted? Will I be accepted by God? Have I strayed too far? Am I the sheep that the shepherd really doesn't want? The answer is you already belong to God. And if you're wondering about this flock, this part of God's family, would you be accepted by this flock? The answer is yes. You could say our, our sheepfold is large. Another way we like to say it here at Messiah is if we have a really big table and that there's a place already set for you. We long for the day when we get to gather back around that table all together, not virtually, but actually be in each other's physical presence. There's a place at this table. There's a place in the heart of God that's just for you. And God's continuing to call your name. I believe this year, we're all going to come to value our life together in ways that we've never dreamed of. We're going to value our life together as a church as we never have before. We're discovering new ways to look out for each other. New ways to love one another. And all because we're part of Christ's flock. All because we know we have a place at the table, in the sheepfold, in the heart of God. And so the question today for each of us is, are you listening? He is showing you the way. He is the open gate. He's inviting you in. And it is the voice of the shepherd that is there to protect you. Listen. He's calling your name. Amen.